hi ladies welcome or welcome back to the feminine universe i'm so happy to have you here we are continuing our dive into the different feminine styles if you feel like your style isn't typically covered or included in feminine style content you just might see it in here in the previous video we covered the classic five feminine styles and we also covered the three factors you really want to consider as you discover or further develop your style so check that out if you haven't seen it already now today we are going to be getting into another six styles this time I wanted to highlight a few styles that are newer maybe only recently becoming seen as feminine or styles that with the right tweaking can become more feminine so let's get right back into it We'll kick things off with the classic sleek style. This is where classic meets modern. In this style, you will have a heavy rotation of many classic timeless pieces. Pieces that are as relevant now as they were 50 years ago. The things we regularly see on every wardrobe must-haves list. Things like a little black dress, button downs, blazers, and pencil skirts. But with a touch of modernity like skinny jeans or sky high heels as well. A few noticeable aspects of this style are that most of the pieces are fitted and tailored just right and you'll notice a willingness to add a little something extra to the classics for the sake of flair and aesthetics. The classics with a twist if you will. Whether that's opting for something a little extra fitted, a bit more jewelry than what's considered necessary, or a stunning high heel pump. Even a fun handbag or the unexpected inclusion of a small trend can also be part of this. This style takes all the classics we know and love and asks, how can I make this a little more feminine and a little more fabulous? This look is classic, polished, and refined with a touch of modernity and glamour. While it doesn't quite say duchess in the way that the elegant aristocratic style does, it is absolutely dignified in its own slightly more relaxed and slightly more modern way. Some style inspiration for this kind of look are Rosie Huntington Whitley's personal style or Victoria Beckham's most recent looks. She definitely used to be more glam but she's leaned more into the classic sleek style recently. A few features of this look are tailored clothing that fit like they're almost custom made, quality material, and many classic timeless wardrobe staples like classic handbags, classic pumps, a black cocktail dress, a great pencil skirt, quality denim, a great trench coat, black sunglasses, solid jewelry, and so on. Next, let's talk about the minimalist look. The term minimalist when it comes to style can refer to at least three different things. People who believe in simply having less clothing, people who only or mostly support sustainably made clothing, or people who just like understated style and understated outfits. For this video, we'll be using the term minimalist to refer to the understated style and outfits. This minimalist style tends to be the opposite of the glam style that we talked about in the previous video while still being extremely chic. This one is really where fashion and functionality meet. Minimalist style is characterized by a simple, clean aesthetic with lots of simple cuts and neutral colors. This is actually another style that also tends to lean quite modest. The pieces are usually less fitted and tend to drape rather than cling to the body to give this neat but relaxed and sometimes even oversized vibe. This style also tends to use jewelry minimally but effectively. You might opt for for a watch instead of bangles for example. If you prefer flats, you're in luck here again because polished flats like ballet flats and loafers are also a staple in this style. Now depending on exactly which pieces are chosen and how these pieces of clothing fit, this style can sometimes lean a little androgynous. So if this is your style, making sure to keep the hair, nails, skincare, and makeup on point can really 
really amp up the femininity of this look. Mixing in additional accessories like cute handbags and heels, even low heels from time to time can also help boost the femininity of this style even more. Overall, this style is where low-key chic resides. Katie Holmes really nails this minimalist style in all its different forms. What you want to focus on if this is your style are neutrals. That way almost everything in your closet works together creating a bit of a capsule wardrobe vibe. You'll also want to incorporate monochromatic outfits when you're feeling really chic whether that's all black, all creme, all tan, it just works. And you'll want to add on accessories that are functional and fabulous like a beautiful watch as well as polished quality shoes from flats to low heels that are cute and practical for getting around in. Next, we have to talk about vintage and retro style because the ladies from the decades and eras before us had some extremely feminine style going on and they can certainly teach us a thing or two. Though many times people are referring to one particular era as vintage, I personally think that anything from the 70s, maybe even the 80s and before can fall under vintage territory. The vintage style is a very notable noticeable look. You can't miss the ladies with this style because the looks and the pieces are clearly not from this time and yet still extremely pretty and attractive. Some ladies go all in with this style from head to toe whereas other ladies prefer to incorporate certain parts, trends, or pieces from their chosen time period into their current wardrobe. Your must-haves for this style will really vary based on what era you're into. You'll want to look for the signature piece or pieces of that era as well as the signature hairstyles. Hairstyles are very important in vintage looks from finger waves to pinup curls to old Hollywood waves to big retro styles. Dita Von Teese is really embodying the vintage style today. She has this one in the bag. The inspiration is also abundant depending on your era. You can go from the Victorian times right on down to Dorothy Dandridge, to Marilyn Monroe, to Diane Carroll, Audrey Hepburn, Diana Ross, and so many more. Next, let's talk about trendy and editorial feminine style. Trendiness can get a bad rap for being inconsistent and going where the wind blows and editorial looks which typically fill the pages of magazines can be seen as too over the top for everyday life. But listen, there are ladies who sincerely love fashion and love to experiment and they can do it quite well. These women are passionate about and keep up with fashion and trends and getting dressed is just one more opportunity to express that passion daily. There are two simple things you want to remember when it comes to trendy and editorial style to help you pull it off well. The first is to know what suits you because some trends very clearly flatter particular body types or certain heights more than others. And the second thing to remember is to also build your core closet because these core staples will be the backbone of your wardrobe while you you rotate in and out trendier pieces. You may want to splurge a little more on your core closet and then incorporate more budget-friendly trendy pieces as trends just tend to change more often. Remember to employ one trend at a time or at least to match complementary trends to avoid things clashing or becoming more distracting than attractive. Zendaya is an amazing example of tastefully experimenting with and executing trends. If this is your style, the must-haves will change depending on the season and what's in at the time, but you will probably gravitate towards the more experimental and colorful, especially the color of the year for that year and the trend du jour. Sometimes that's skinny jeans and sometimes that's a wide leg pant. So just keep up with the magazines, the blogs, and your favorite influencers to keep you updated on the freshest styles. Next, let's cover alternative feminine fashion. This includes anything that would be considered cool girl chic or edgy girl friendly. It covers anything a little more 
out of the mainstream from rocker girl chic to more dark vampy vibes to the more eccentric. In these styles, you may notice quite a bit more black than typical and maybe a little bit more of certain fabrics and materials that are usually quite rare in other feminine styles. Think a material like leather. But the femininity is still present in this style because many of the pieces tend to be form-fitting or flowy. The pieces that tend to get incorporated in this style tend to be things like corsets, black dresses, black skinny jeans, knee-high boots, and platform heels, which on their own are actually all very feminine pieces. Like I said, there are women who pull this one off extremely well. Think about celebrities like a Lisa Bonet or Rihanna as well. Even though she is actually more of a fashion chameleon, she definitely had a stage of pulling off this more alternative style effortlessly. That being said, I don't want to lead anyone astray. Depending on the circles you move in currently or the circles you want to move in, this style may not be received as well as the others. Like if you're a musician or or painter or any other kind of artist, this style may be easier to pull off or be more accepted than let's say it would be if you're trying to climb the corporate ladder. But there is a time and place for everything and this style definitely has a feminine side and deserves its own mention. And speaking of moving up in the corporate world, that is the last style that I want to touch on in this video. Being that in most places, women entered the workforce long after men, corporate wear is very inspired by men's wear. And while we should absolutely have our basics like suits, blazers, and button downs, we also have to seek ways to feminize this gear and make it our own in order to make this an actual feminine style. Firstly, opt for dresses and skirts whenever you can. Add a little lift to your shoes if you can. Of course, this depends on how much walking or standing you do at work. Choose structured pieces in more feminine colors and incorporate soft textures like a cashmere cardigan for example. Button downs are great but when you want even more of a feminine touch, opt for blouses in beautiful materials with lovely details like draping, small keyholes, and small bows. The line we should be seeking to walk is feminine but professional. We don't have to completely disregard the fact that we're women in order to dress professionally and just like we don't need to go masculine, we also don't need to go frumpy or dowdy to be professional either. We should keep the hemlines at the knee or lower and keep the cleavage to a minimum. We should also avoid obscenely tight clothing. Remember in the how to dress more feminine video, we talked about the difference between tight and fitted. We are going for sharp professional women rather than girls night out or date night or someone's grandma. Think the leading ladies from Scandal and Suits like Olivia Pope and Jessica Pearson rather than the ladies from The Office. <laughs> no shade, I love that show. Amal Clooney also does feminine corporate quite well, exquisitely actually. So remember, there is absolutely a spectrum to every single one of these styles from the most full on to the more partial and casual versions. I also want to take a moment to remind you that you may have one main style or your style can be a hybrid of two or even a combination of three different styles. You may also want to tap into different styles depending on the occasion. I hope this gave you a few more styles to look at and maybe see yourself in and a few more styles you can think about and possibly incorporate. Until next time ladies, stay feminine, stay focused, and have fun.